Not sure what these terrorists in CSGO are using, but it isn't very effective. This is far better. Yep, Train and Vertigo now join Nuke and Dust 2 as being global offensive maps that have been expertly taughted to pare down, which is a voxel based game with destruction. Why should you care? Because it's nice to finally be able to blow stuff up. And to explore. Now I know a lot of players love those explore maps in Counter Strike which remove the natural boundaries and which encourage you to hop onto stuff and to reach the rooftops. Teardown obviously has a different movement system to Counter Strike, but if anything I think it's better suited to this sort of exploration, and the game's destruction mechanic both aids in the exploration and is a fun thing to do by itself, once you get bored of the rest. I do try to appreciate it, but I'm sure I'm still vastly underestimating the time, effort and passion that is required to make levels this faithful to the original material, whilst also elaborating on the map's blander or more incomplete areas. So come on a New Year's adventure with me as I venture through parts of training which don't exist, but which look so convincing you'll swear it's how it's meant to look. And then I'll blow it all up. We get a hint at what's beyond the fence at CT Spawn in CSGO, that the area is feature incomplete and we don't have to travel too far before we discover areas which aren't drawn and spots that aren't detailed. This is all for optimization reasons, because in Counter Strike players will never visit this area, so it only has to look convincing from CT Spawn, preferably with as few details as possible as everything that needs to be drawn slows your frame rate down by a little bit. But since Teardown features this as a fully explorable, detailed environment, it has a lot more stuff here. This must be tough to do, because they've kept the buildings, the plants, the placements of everything, even the graffitis on the wall, the same as we've seen in Counter Strike. But on top of that, areas that were previously hidden have been given props and personality. I will just say now that I've got a few mods installed which I find fun. I've got the Iron Cannon from Command & Conquer because it does a great job of dealing the level of destruction that I'd expect the bombs in CSGO to inflict when they go off. And I've got the Progressive Destruction mod on, which crumbles stuff near areas of damage. You can tweak how keen this is to break stuff, I've got it on a rather enthusiastic setting, which is why you'll frequently see walls and trees near explosions crumpling to the ground in dramatic fashion, kind of like football players when they sustain even the slightest whiff of damage. For instance. Check out what happens when I shoot this sign right here. I think it's kind of fun. This walkway here was entirely empty in CSGO, so what goes on beyond this part is anyone's guess. Here's how the mappers of this teardown level envisioned it looking. It appears to be the front of the train station, complete with parking area and reception room. Bear in mind that while trains are train station, please don't eat my monitor Fluffy, it appears to be a private, industrial style one. So this teardown version does the right thing by sticking to it being more of a base of sorts, rather than one that the public can visit. This is when I'll turn into Two Clicks Philip for a minute, cause teardown did ray tracing before it was cool. This is all voxel based ray tracing so it isn't quite the same as other implementations, but you can shoot out all the lights and it will update the environment in real time, which is really cool. Teardown might look like Minecraft but the technology in this game is streets ahead of CSGO. Look at this, I can light the environment in real time by carrying a light around with me and uh... Anyway, I love this teardown version of Train because you think you're in the middle of nowhere, then you open a door and find yourself at Long A again, or somewhere that you've been a thousand times before. And it's hopping between the known and the unknown like this that blows my mind. For instance, if I take a quick detour through these back offices, I'll reach a stairwell of some sort around the back, which doesn't exist in Counter-Strike get to the roof and I'll smash this window or sunroof or whatever you call these things and I'll find myself in a random meeting room, which goes through to a back room with a really nice big window in it. If I smash the window then I'm back to a Counter Strike environment again. But there's no way this place existed in CSGO is there? How about that? So I think this teardown version of the map can also give me a greater appreciation for the original map and all its extra details and places and it makes me realise just how little I know about the map that I thought I had played so many times before. And I interrupt this video to quickly showcase Vertigo, which is another teardown map the makers of the train map have made. I won't be running about this one though, I'll just be blowing it up. Yes. Just over the wall from T-Spawn is another place that I swear had more detail than I can actually see here. I'm sure when I used to ride on those pigeons I could see trains queuing off into the distance in this area. So I guess this moving train here did its job well, even if it is just two carriages continuously repositioning to give the impression that there's a long moving train just here. Well played Valve, but I'm a little bit sad to see that it was all a trick. 
but never fear, the teardowns version envisions this all for me. Just for the sake of continuity, I'll fly over to the car park and back again, just to say that we've done a whole tour around this level by the end. Now this building always seemed to be a bit of an anomaly to me. I didn't ever understand why Valve added as much detail to it as they did. Teardown doesn't add much more to it, but it does at least make all the walls look solid now. So yeah, a lot more trains, a lot more tracks, and a lot uh, of physics objects. They've even managed to add the warm-up zones into their version of train. Take a look at this, and here's the teardown version, just over the wall from T Spawn. It even has the same fluid physics on the barrels. I refuse to consider that I've turned the destruction settings up too high. So the next area around the map is out the back of T-Spawn. Not exactly a place that's been fleshed out too much in CSGO, but Teardown's version, again, goes above and beyond. And this truck goes from being an obstruction to being something you can drive. It goes without saying that this place is entirely fictional. A bit like all of Train in the first place. But it's still inspired by the original version, because this warehouse is still visible in CSGO. It can be seen from T-Main if you jump over this bit here, but it's a lot easier to see if you look out the windows at Tunnel, which must have been in my blind spot every time because I'm sure it wasn't this visible from there before. Anyway, Teardown connects the train tracks below up with Bombsite A, which, by the way, also line up perfectly in the CSGO version. While we're here at Bombsite A, we may as well blow it up. Believe it or not, this also saves the video some time, because it highlights how all the buildings are constructed out of actual rooms and staircases and stuff, which helps make sense of all the high up walkways that you see dotted about the map in Counter-Strike. And look, a secret hidden sewer place just here, which doubles up as a credits area. And yes, that sewer cover is in the actual map as well. So again, if we head out the back, you can see the most extensive new segment of Teardown's train level. To the point where it's a real shame that Counter-Strike version doesn't have it, because it is really lovely. Not sure about the Agent 47 artwork, but it looks cool. But look at this! Through his face and back into the real level again, this time in the offices that overlook B. And right next to it is that opened up area that you can prenade B from as terrorists. Time for Vertigo's bombsite B to get some. Right, we're so close to finishing this round trip around the map, so let's do that now. Look at this. All this lovely stuff hidden behind that ugly brick wall on Bombsite B. This is what Counter-Strike thinks is behind this wall. So I'm perfectly happy if we all agree that this is how Train is meant to look beyond its confines. Let's see what Bombsite B could look like were it not for that ugly wall that they're trying to build there. Wonderful. And there we are, back to CT Spawn again. I feel like if I had to port a Counter-Strike map, I'd fall short of finishing what's there already. Yet all these teardown made Counter-Strike levels go above and beyond by having more of the level than they need to. It took them roughly 400 hours over the course of 8 months to develop this one level. Most of that was spent working on map geometry, which was done by C Subliminal. Or since this is a Counter-Strike channel, it's yes, Upliminal. The Mafia worked on importing the props and in getting the campaign and coding all done for it. Let's end this year with a bang by getting asteroids to hit the core structure in the middle of Vertigo, which is clearly the bit of the building the terrorists should have been targeting in the first place. Happy New Year.